Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on strategies to prevent post-operative pulmonary complications, part 1. Post-operative pulmonary complications, examples include hypoxia, atelectasis, respiratory infection, respiratory failure, pleural effusion, pneumothorax, and bronchospasm. PPCs are the most frequent post-operative complication that has to be managed by anesthetists. Incidence of PPCs varies according to the definition and type of surgery and ranges 5-33%. to 30-day 30 mortality rate for patients who develop PPCs may be as high as 20%. Negative implications of PPCs PPCs are a major contributor to overall surgical risk. They are associated with increased post-operative morbidity, mortality, hospital length of stay, number of unplanned admissions to the ICU, and healthcare costs are increased by 2 to 12 times. Preoperative strategies Clinical scores are useful to stratify risk, select patients that might benefit from preoperative ICU admission, and to identify and reduce the impact of modifiable risk factors. Although a dedicated score should be used for preoperative pulmonary risk evaluation, Currently, there is no single universally accepted clinical scoring system to predict PPCs. Most scores are too complex to be clinically useful or lack external validation. As a summary, the greatest risk factors for PPCs are pre-op factors, age more than 50 years old, BMI more than 40 kg per meter square, ASA class more than 2, OSA, preoperative anemia, preoperative hypoxemia, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Intraoperative factors include emergency or urgent surgery, ventilation duration more than 2 hours, hemodynamic impairment intraop, and low oxyhemoglobin saturation intraop. The following are examples of the most commonly used clinical scoring systems to predict PPCs. The ARISCAT Assess respiratory risk in surgical patients in Catalonia is the only score that has been externally validated. It predicts risk of pulmonary complications after surgery, including respiratory failure. For patients undergoing surgery under general neuraxial or regional anesthesia. Possible modifiable risk factors include respiratory infection in the last month, pre-op anemia, surgical incision and duration of surgery. Non-modifiable risk factors include age, pre-op SpO2, and emergency or elective surgery. Next is the Gupta Postoperative Pneumonia Risk Score. It predicts risk of pneumonia after surgery. Possible modifiable risk factors include sepsis, smoking before operation, and type of surgery. Non-modifiable risk factors include age, COPD, functional status, and ASA class. Next is the Gupta Postoperative Respiratory Failure Risk Score. It predicts risk of mechanical ventilation for longer than 48 hours post-op or re-intubation within 30 days. Possible modifiable risk factors include sepsis and type of surgery. Non-modifiable risk factors include functional status, ASA class, and emergency or elective surgery. Lastly is the Arozula Score. Possible modifiable risk factors include urea levels, alcohol intake, smoking before operation, chronic steroid use before operation, type of surgery, and general or regional anesthesia. Non-modifiable risk factors include age, dependent functional status, COPD, impact sensorium, CVA, transfusion of more than 4 unit pack cell prior to surgery, weight loss more than 10% in the past 6 months, and emergency or elective surgery. If the surgery is not so urgent, shared efforts should be made by the surgical team, anesthetists, and other disciplines to reduce the risk of developing PPCs, for example, by opting for a shorter or less invasive procedure, choosing an alternative procedure lasting less than 4 hours when possible, opting for surgery other than upper abdomen or thorax when possible, for example, proceeding with percutaneous cholecystostomy instead of open cholecystectomy in a critically ill, high-risk patient with acute cholecystitis. 
ensure adequate fasting times to reduce the risk of aspiration, encourage smoking cessation as early as possible. Summary of benefits of increasing duration of abstinence from smoking prior to general anesthesia. If the duration is 12 to 24 hours of abstinence, there is reduction in carbon monoxide levels. If 48 hours, there is reduced airway hyperactivity. If it is 1 to 2 weeks, there is marked reduction in airway hyperreactivity. Unresolved reactive bronchorea may cause increased respiratory complications. If the duration of abstinence is 2 to 4 weeks, the risk of PPCs are not reduced yet. If the duration of abstinence is 4 weeks, the risk of respiratory complications such as bronchospasm, atelectasis and lung infections are reduced by 25%. There is improved wound healing. If the duration of abstinence is 8 weeks, the risk of respiratory complications is reduced by 50%. If the duration of abstinence is 6 months, the risk of respiratory complications are similar to non-smokers. Kindly refer to the video discussing smoking and anesthesia for further details. Other strategies to reduce PPCs includes correcting anemia, managing obesity, treating OSA, and optimizing treatment of respiratory diseases. Delay surgery after a recent respiratory infection when feasible. Consider antibiotics for patients with lower respiratory tract infection. In patients with clinically significant COPD, administer regular ipratropium or thiotropium. In patients with COPD or asthma who have wheeze or dyspnea, administer inhaled beta agonist as required and preoperative glucocorticoids. Screen and treat COVID-19. Refer the patient for preoperative inspiratory muscle training and chest physiotherapy, which includes breathing exercises, aerobic exercise, incentive spirometry, education on active breathing, forced expiration techniques, etc. These are my references.